Hello, and welcome to this demonstrational video for the daily maintenance on the SG Series Pitco Fryer. This video will cover morning startup, filtering procedures, filter troubleshooting, general troubleshooting, and computer programming. At the start of the day, it's important to first check a few things, such as making sure there are no obstructions between the exhaust flue and the hood. Check to make sure that all gas valves are in the on position and that the oil is below the max fill line and above the minimum fill line. We are now ready to turn on the fryers. Your controller may differ from the one in this video. Let's get started on the proper operation for filtering. Before filtering, it's always important to check that the paper is clean of crumbs and large debris. Open the door and pull the filter pan out. If the paper is dirty or is more than one day old, replace it. Make sure to inspect the new piece for tears. Pull off and swing over the pickup tube. Loosen the lock nut in the center of the paper assembly. Remove the paper retaining clip from the paper assembly. Open the paper envelope and remove the support rack. After cleaning the pan and filter components, slide the support rack into a new filter envelope. Attach the paper retaining clip and tighten the lock nut. Place the assembly into the filter pan. Install the pickup tube and swing it down onto the filter assembly. Make sure the tube is seated completely over the collar of the filter assembly. Before filtering, it is important to make sure that the oil is between 300 and 350 degrees. Press the thermometer key once to show the actual temperature and then turn the unit off. And remove any large debris from the oil with a skimmer. Open the door and pull the blue drain valve handle to drain the oil into the filter pan. Oil should drain freely and without obstruction. If not, use the clean-out rod supplied with the unit to check the bottom of the tank for obstructions. Once the oil is completely drained from the tank, inspect the bottom for large debris. If there's an excessive amount of product, use the fryer crumb scoop supplied with the unit to remove it. It may be necessary to use a green scrub pad to loosen debris from the walls of the tank. Make sure to wear heat resistant gloves during this procedure. Okay, now we're ready to turn on the pump and start returning the oil. Simply pull the red handle to engage the pump and open the valve. Keep the blue drain valve handle open for about 10 seconds to flush any remaining crumbs from the bottom of the tank. After the 10 seconds, lift the blue handle to close the drain valve and start filling the tank. This is real time footage of the tank filling. The filling process should be less than one minute. If it is noticeably slower than this, check the cleanliness of your paper, or continue to watch to see how to check the strainer cap. It is also possible that the oil is too cold. Was it between 300 and 350 when it was drained? Don't allow the oil to sit in the filter pan for too long before filtering. Once all the oil is pumped back into the tank, you'll start to see bubbles immersing from the oil. Allow the pump to run for an additional 10 to 15 seconds to return any leftover oil from the filter pan or the filter return lines. After 10 to 15 seconds of bubbles, close the valve and stop the pump by pushing the red return valve handle in. Once the oil is still, you'll notice that the oil level is less than when you started. Make sure that it is above the minimum line and below the maximum line. After each filtering, check the paper for large debris or a large collection of crumbs. Remove any debris with the filter crumb scoop supplied with the unit. Be careful not to tear the paper or it will need to be replaced. Moving on to a little troubleshooting, if you pull the red return handle and nothing happens, here's what to check. There is a circuit breaker located above the filter pan on the left side, labeled off, on. This is a circuit breaker and should always be in the on position. If the circuit breaker has tripped, check the strainer cap for cleanliness. Any debris on the strainer means the paper is torn or installed incorrectly. Use hot water to clean the strainer and inspect the paper for issues. Reinstall the strainer cap hand tight. If the pump motor becomes too hot, it has a thermal limit switch which may trip. Allow the motor to cool for a few minutes and try pressing the reset button. If the motor tripped, a problem in the filter system exists. 
Resetting the circuit breaker over and over will not fix the problem. If the issue cannot be found, an authorized service agency will need to be contacted. The Solsa series fryers are equipped with a patented swiveling downspout that allows the user to go from a filtering drain to a disposal drain without any detachable parts. Simply pull the pan out, lift the drain spout, remove the pan, place your oil disposal container under the drain spout, and drain the oil into the container. Once the oil is disposed of, replace the filter pan and push the drain spout down. Okay, let's move on to some general troubleshooting. When the fryer is first turned on, it will display melt or heating. Almost immediately, the pilot should light, followed by the burners. If for some reason the pilot does not light, the controller will display ignition failure. Turn the controller off, and let's check a few things. Open the door, and watch the pilot as you turn the controller on. Is the pilot sparking? If so, look at the gas valve and make sure that it's in the on position. If the pilot is not sparking, then try pressing the red high limit reset button. If this button clicks, then either the unit overheated or the limit is bad. Press the button until it does not click anymore. If the button continues to click or this does not solve the problem, it may be necessary to contact a local authorized service agency. Turn the computer on by pressing the on-off key. The display will read Melt L. This signifies the unit is in a liquid melt cycle. Notice the LEDs on the thermometer key. These LEDs indicate the computer is calling for heat. Press the thermometer key once to show the actual temperature. If the oil is under 100 degrees, the display will show dashes. Press the thermometer key twice to display the set temperature. To enter the programming mode, press the P button. The display will read program. Press the thermometer key to change the set temperature. The default temp is 350 degrees. Simply enter in the desired temperature. The set temperature must be between 200 and 380 degrees. Press the P button to return to the program screen. Now we want to set some times for our product keys. We'll start by pressing the clock key. The display will read select product, meaning select the product key we wish to modify. We'll start with product key L. Press the L key to enter into the product times. Notice the display shows L for product key L, CK for cook, and 30 seconds. This means that product key L has a current cook time of 30 seconds. Simply enter the time you wish the product to cook for. We will use three minutes. Press the clock key to move on to the next step in setting up your product time. The display will change to LSH. This means product L shake time. Enter the duration into your cook time you wish an alarm to sound, signifying a need for product shake. We will use 150 in this case. This means that one minute and 50 seconds into the cook time, the shake alarm will sound. Press the clock key to move on to the next step in setting up your product time. The display will change to LHD. This means product L hold duration. Enter the duration after your cook time you wish an alarm to sound, signifying a need to hold product. We will use three minutes in this case. This means that three minutes after the cook time, the hold alarm will sound. Press the clock key to move on to the next step in setting up your cook time. The display will change to LPA. This means product L pre-alarm. Enter the duration into your cook time you wish an alarm to sound, signifying the cook time has almost expired. We will use 2 minutes 20 seconds in this case. This means that 2 minutes and 20 seconds into the cook time, the pre-alarm will sound, letting you know there is 40 seconds left before your cook time is up. Press the clock key to return to the select product screen. Continue on repeating these steps for all of the keys you wish to have product times for. Pressing the P button from this point will return us to the program screen. Press the zero key to enter the options mode. Once in the options screen, the LEDs above 1 through 7 will illuminate. Pressing option 1 will enter the degrees option. From here, we can change the temperature display to show in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Use the zero key to toggle between the two. When finished, press the P button to return to the program screen. Each time you press the P button, you'll be returned to the program screen. You will need to press the zero key to re-enter the options mode. Once back in options mode, option 2 will allow you to password protect the programming mode. 
enter the desired password and press P to exit. We will use the default password of 6684. Option 3 is the volume level control. Pressing the zero key will toggle between the three different levels of the alarm volume. Option 4 is the language selection. Pressing the zero key will toggle between English, Spanish, French, German, and Dutch. Option 5 is for the melt cycle. Pressing the zero key will toggle between the liquid shortening, solid shortening, or no melt cycle. The factory would always recommend using a melt cycle. Option 6 is for recovery test times. Pressing the zero key will toggle between the factory time and the last recorded field time. Field times will be re-recorded after the unit drops below 100 degrees. Times are recorded between 220 and 280 degrees. Option 7 is for the control and timer mode function. Pressing the zero key will toggle between the control mode and the timer mode. Control mode means the computer is in control of heating the unit as well as timing functions. Timer mode means the computer is used as a timer only. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the factory at 1-800-258-3708. If you need to find out who your local authorized service agent is, please visit our website at www.pitgo.com.